No. Okay, so we are going to start out. We have 16 now, so that's great. We're we're gonna just start out with good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. I think I talked on Tuesday, like my my mantra is change your thoughts, change your world. And that was one of the meditation tapes that I'm doing. And it just like that resonated with me. So I keep saying that to myself. I also have two words that I am living by for 2021 instead of a resolution. Um, I carefully chose two words that I'm going to be living by. And that is joy and movement. And on our team, everyone is sharing weekly what their two words are. And I'm telling you, it really helps. Um, I pick joy because I want to remember and experience joy every day instead of just when I can, when I get a chance to really reflect on it or experience it. And joy happens every single moment of the day. I just need to be more aware of it. And movement is just moving more, moving my body, moving my mind, just movement. So um, I encourage you to think about two words that you would like to embrace this year and have that as a daily uh, conversation with yourself to keep you on track. And again, changing your thoughts will change your world. And this is more than anything, it's a mind, it's a mind game that we're in. <laughs> and it starts with ourself. So we So Janine, do you have those two words posted anywhere? Everywhere. I have it on okay. my whiteboard at the office. Um, I have it on my workbook that I work out of every single day. I, I, I'm more of, I have it right here. Like I, okay. I envision it, I visualize it on my front door going outside and also coming in, it's just kind of everywhere. Well, so, and I think because as a person, as a people, we're visual people too, and we've talked about this before, you know, having your whiteboard, having your plan of attack, having your listings, um, having the people you're looking for or the people who are on the top of your mind who may be looking, it's really, really important to write things down. I know I was just going through my book. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have somebody who wanted a house in March. And I totally forgot about it until I went back in my book and I have to write them on my list, bring them back to the top. And I think having, yeah. um, having your words, you know, your words to focus on, to have that at the top of your list also, so you can physically see it because our minds move a mile a minute, especially with all the technology we're in right now. Yeah. It's really easy to zip, zip, you know, the, the whole squirrel adage, I think it's, it's just one of those things that's that's very common now. So physically writing things down so you can see it gets your mind in the right mindset. Absolutely. Uh, so we have someone that is going to just, if you don't know Amanda Schrader, you will in just a second. Um, Amanda is part of our productivity launch program. And for those of you that don't know you, or don't know Amanda, um, here is her introduction. She's gonna tell you a little bit about herself and then what she will help you with in the productivity program. Amanda. Thank you, Janine. Hi, everybody. Hey. I'm Amanda, Amanda. Schroeder. Um, hey, can, we, can we turn you to your right side up? Cause right now you're sideways like this. Am I really? Oh, now you're upside down. This thing. No, oh, yeah. how's that? Nope. One more time. No, she, you know what? I, she's up, she's right me. side up. There you are. I'm right side up to myself. She's right, she's side, right side up to me. Yeah, okay, right then up. I'm working uh, on a sideways world once again. Sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> <carry on. laughs> I mean, you know, whatever, whatever works. Just lay um, down, so. Connie. <laughs> oh, there you go. Nothing surprises me. <laughs> Um, so thanks for, for the introduction, Janine, and thanks for the opportunity to say hi. I see a lot of familiar faces um, in the class today, but maybe some people who haven't come to launch yet. So I am one of the coaches in the launch program, along with Janine and Connie, um, our helpline people as well. And um, 
I have a class on Tuesdays. If you haven't been, it's 1030 to 1130. And we're um, working in tandem with Janine and Connie to try to give you a well-rounded um, experience and background to build your business. So what I'm going to be focusing on this quarter is all coming from the One Thing book. If you don't have it, it's absolutely worth getting. I would recommend a paper copy so that you can um, take notes and read it again and again, because it'll be more of a reference for you. Um, it's a book by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan, who are obviously um, at the head of our company. And it's really excellent in terms of a number of things that are mindset related in really taking control of not just your business, but your life. And being able to apply that as you start your business is super important. So we'll, yesterday we touched on, or pardon me, Tuesday we touched on habits, which is such a big piece of um, making things run smoothly. And we'll also be talking about time management, prioritization, your mindset, setting boundaries, all the important things that are kind of behind the scenes of all the real estate business that you'll be doing. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing all of you there on Tuesdays at 1030. And um, I try to put a preview in the North Shore Facebook page um, on Tuesdays, like during the meeting or just after the meeting to let you know what our topic will be. But those are some things to look forward to. I'm also available for accountability calls, which are a 20 minute check in. You text me to set up a time. And then it's a phone call and we're checking in on your goals, your progress, and just holding you accountable to whatever habit you're trying to build, whatever project you're working on. Um, so that's a great opportunity that not many people take advantage of and certainly is worth your time. Um, so you can always text me to set that up. I'll put my phone number in the chat. Awesome. Awesome. Great. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the amazing results from all that you'll be doing in productivity too. This is great. Amanda, what is the number one, uh, let's say, thing that you are tackling with new agents that come to you on Tuesdays? I think the biggest question that comes up all the time is like, where do I start? How do I prioritize? What's most important? Mm -hmm. And so we're touching on those things and talking about how to focus your attention and best use your time. Uh, we understand that not everybody has a full day uninterrupted to dedicate to getting things going. So it's really about kind of filtering through all of the information you're getting and figuring out what you really need to focus on to start and how you can get some traction with that. That's great because it's so overwhelming in the beginning. I know I, when I started, I was like, oh my gosh, I, you, you just have this wealth, as Ginny likes to say, drinking out of the fire hose. Yeah, and we yes. really need to start with uh, the Wisconsin and me, start with the bubbler um, instead of sucking out of the fire hose because you'll just become so overwhelmed with everything. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very important to know what to start with. Right. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I've seen, you know, with Keller Williams now, I think, well, for six years and in the business for seven is the... Um, inability or not inability but the confidence to write a strong offer so mm -hmm. you know there are on mondays at 1 30 kimmy does teach a contracts class yes. and i highly suggest yes. that you attend and as a brand new agent i would pick something out of mls a condo and uh, a duplex in a single family home and be very comfortable with writing that offer. Um, yeah. One exclusion, one thing that is not done incorrectly, it could possibly um, have you not get that offer accepted because it has to be countered. Um, mm -hmm. And you don't want a co-broke to be calling you and saying, you left out lines, dot, 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 dot. Um, so start off on the right foot. Cause I know personally, that's one of the things I felt like was holding me back is I did, I could talk and I could, you know, show houses and, you know, get them to write an offer, but I was hesitant 
to sit down and actually write that offer, I needed to feel very confident with that process. So mm -hmm. yeah. I would say oh, yeah. do, do that right away and get your database going. Yep. So um, one great way to um, meet new people that are not currently in your database is going to be through open houses. And, you know, it's, it's a little different right now, but honestly, that's how I started is I did two, four, four open houses a weekend. And then I might have done one on a Thursday night. So maybe five. So that was my kickstart. I wanted to get out there and meet people and just kind of get used to the process. That's how I started building my business. And I feel like if you can perfect that, then you can perfect just about anything. So one of the first things that we're gonna kind of go through and talk about today is you signed up for an open house and now what? So Connie's gonna take the lead on this one because she is the open house queen. <laughs> so I'm gonna back it up just a little bit because as a new agent, um, it's we usually don't have listings to do open houses on. So the great way of finding an open house, because agents who have numerous open houses, we're, we're only, we can only spread ourselves so thin to do our open houses and sellers want open houses. With COVID, it's, it's a hit or miss kind of a thing. But um, when you go on MLS, you can do an MLS search to search all of the listings in your office. So everyone should be familiar with MLS, go on to MLS, search listings in your office, find a house that you feel you would be comfortable in and in the area that you would like to work in, because there's where you're going to attract, um, you know, buyers and sellers because neighbors will come into those open houses to be nosy, to see what this house is selling for. And they're actually interviewing you, whether you know it or not, to see if you would be a good agent to sell their house. Um, those sellers will then watch and see how long that house was on the market for. And um, it's a great contact for you to follow up with and say, hey, I just sold 123 Main Street. We have an accepted offer in three days. I do have more buyers. Could we put your house on the market? I know you were interested. So finding a, um, an area that you'd like to work in and the price range that you would that you feel comfortable with, you will get better and be more comfortable with different price points and different styles as you move forward. I promise. If you're very comfortable in ranches, stick with ranch houses until you move into your two stories, um, your duplexes, and then um, you'll you'll get more familiar with these properties and and feel more comfortable. So. Um, <clears throat> what I have with doing your open house, if you're going to do an open house correctly, you should be doing some prep work because we all know that showing up um, uh, not prepared will not give you the results that you would like. So what I would like to do is, um, let's see here. I want to share my screen here. Can I do a, sh a screen share by any chance? Maybe, no? Maybe, you should Maybe be able to. Entire screen share. It's not um, bright, it's not letting me. Huh. Okay, I can, I can just go through things. Okay. Oh. Something's oh. happening. <laughs> I have Janine's screen. That was me. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I can just go through things. So um, keep in mind, depending on your neighborhood, depending on what's going on with our world, I'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, you should really start your prep for your open house hard on Wednesday before your open house. So um, making open house flyers, and door knocking the neighborhood, let the neighbors know that you will be having an open house. Yes, they may be nosy neighbors, but they have friends who may want to live in their subdivision. So what I do when I door knock is, um, depending on the size of the neighborhood, and you're gonna get your steps in doing this, 
go and knock door to door and tell everybody you will be having your an open house in their neighborhood. 123 Main Street, and do you have any friends who would like to move to the neighborhood? It's a really easy way to open up a conversation. Some say yes, some say no. Um, I had one person thought I was a politician once knocking on their door, which was absolutely hilarious. Um, but, you know, have your flyer ready with the square footage, the amount of bedrooms, the amount of bathrooms, and the price, put all that information on there because they will pass it on to their friends. The next thing you wanna do is make a post and you can do this in command about um, your open house and post it to Facebook. You wanna post it to your personal page. You wanna post it to your business page. You also want to join the neighborhood pages. So every neighborhood has a page. There's a West Dallas page. There's a Wauwatosa page. There's a Lake Country page. Get invited to these pages and post your open houses. There's a Waukesha County for sale page. There's um, houses for sale pages. Get these out on as many pages as you can. As we all know, I mean, as a show of hands, how many people, how many people get a newspaper at this point in time? Mm, no. Okay, Janine. <laughs> I'm old. I, okay, and there are a lot of people who do like to look at that newspaper, but the way everything is going right now is it's it's technology based. Oh yeah, by the way, guess what? Facebook is free. So this is free advertising and keep in mind when you're starting and even when you're an experienced agent, you really want to watch your budget on your advertising. If you can get free advertising, that is the first thing you should be jumping on. So make sure you get um all of your advertisements and your open houses posted on Facebook. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that there's a rider on the side, on the sign on the front of that house. If you do not have one, um, ask the listing agent if they have one, open Thursday. And this is for a weekend open house. So open Saturday, open Sunday, make sure that rider gets on that house. Any questions so far? What about Good. condos? Condos, okay, condos are interesting because most condos, you cannot put signs outside. So what you're gonna have to do is really hit up Facebook and um, your, the, neighboring, um, the neighboring areas with Facebook on their Facebook pages. Does that make sense? And if you're not sure, if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are hosting for another agent, call that agent well in advance and say, hey, I'm doing an open house at your condo. Um, what, what are the rules and regulations? Can I put signs out? Um, if you have questions of anything about that condo, get all that information because you don't want to sweat it because <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> as you're going to the condo. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, right, definitely. Our, our <laughs> <laughs> um, the next thing you want to do is go on MLS and do a reverse prospect of any agent who has been looking for houses in that area. You want to let them know that there is an open house and you will honor anyone that comes through your open house for them. So um, when you're on a little side note, um, agents will call usually the listing agent and say, I am sending in Susie Smith. Will you register her for me? Yes, definitely. Okay. So um, that's quite a bit to do on Wednesday before your open house. And the Thursday before, make sure you put that ML, put, make sure that MLS is listed in your open house. Once again, hit Facebook with your post, personal, business, neighborhood, and then put it on the office tab also in case if anyone from the office is looking at that house so they can send their people. You should be setting up a landing page on Thursday. Make sure you know how to do it. So on that landing page, what you're gonna do is go into command, go on the consumer tab, Set up your landing page as a standalone with your branded header, your listing, and a lead form. With this, when people come in, 
you are all hands free, especially with COVID. There are a lot of people who are still funny about things. You can put them in your landing page. It goes right into your contacts, which is fabulous. It also will email them all of the information about that house. I do have a couple of paper flyers, but I kind of keep them hidden because I really want to get their information. It's kind of a sneaky way of getting all their contact information. If people um, are kind of funny about it, I always tell them I do not sell their information whatsoever. It is just to get you the information in the house. Okay. Um, lastly, what you want to do on the Thursday before is research that neighborhood. If you're doing an open house, people will come in and say, why is this house priced like this? You should know what has sold in that neighborhood over the last year. You should know what's on the market. You should know if there is a for sale by owner or two or three in the neighborhood and also drive around the neighborhood. You should know if you have the only two story in a ranch neighborhood. You should know if um, uh, uh, you know, just drive around and get a feel for the neighborhood. Tell them, I've seen lots of kids in the neighborhood to, you know, really invite a family into the neighborhood. The Friday before, so that's Thursday. The Friday before, once again, make your Facebook post. Everything should be pretty much done before Friday. On your open house day, once again, make your, your Facebook post. Once you get to the house, I know this is really weird and um, kind of unnerving the first time you do it, and it's still kind of weird for me, but get on Facebook and do a live video. You will be surprised how many people make comments on that Facebook live video, and they like it, and then it's forwarded on to all their friends. So, um, you know, quite a few of you were asking about open houses. There's, there's quite a bit to do for a prep if you want to do an open house correctly. And those of us with listings, um, if you go to an open house and you don't have anybody show up, it's kind of your own fault. Because as, a, as an open house agent, you should be doing your prep work yourself. I mean, as a listing agent, we're still going to do things for you, but you should also be doing th things on your own. Anything to add, Janine? No, is there a raise of hands or you can put it in the comments of anyone on this call right now that has not done an open house. If you could just put it in the chat box, um, I'm curious I'm curious to know. If you have not, um, I, I think I put it out there last week's class, shadow and an experienced agent while they're doing an open house. You mm -hmm. will learn so much. You um, go to open houses, get dressed on Saturday, Sunday, and attend an open house. Mm -hmm. um, when we host now, we only are letting one party in at a time because of COVID, and we have a a big sign that we paste to the front door. I got to tell you, I have had actually better open houses that way because I can actually connect with the people that are coming through. But, mm -hmm. but shadow an experienced agent on how they do an open house. That's number one. So I'm seeing quite a few. Um, there are some people that haven't and they're gonna shadow. Mm -hmm. I am hosting one on Saturday from 12 to 1.30. Um, put it, you know, text me, I'll, whoever texts me first. Um, I would love for you to shadow me. It's 414-617-9016. It's a vacant home. It's, I have been nothing but packed in the last two weekends. And if you are ever interested in picking up a, you know, on our team to do an open house, which are, it's difficult because, you know, the listings aren't just all over the place right yeah. now. Um, our protocol is that you have to shadow, you have to shadow me before you do an open house. So Shadow an experienced agent. There are experienced agents right here on this call. Laura Brewster, she is an ex she's a rock star. 
um, has done an, probably open houses just about every weekend, right, Laura? Oh yeah, I can't hear you. Oh, hey, Janine. If I can, and that's how I got my start when I moved to Keller. When I was yeah. at my old brokerage, I never did them because my mom was an agent and she never did them. <laughs> she didn't like it. And so, but I moved to Keller and it really kickstarted my business off doing opens. Yep. If, and yeah. I shadowed a lot of people. I shadowed Mo, I shadowed Janine, Katie Neville, Stephanie Minnick. Yeah. Yeah. The more you shadow, the better off you're going to be because you're going to find your own style. Yep. It, you're going to find your own unique, you know, specialty. So, okay. Somebody was asking a question. Yeah, Janine, that's me. Oh. I, <laughs> hello. Um, I don't want to go on uh, off on too much of a tangent here, but you mentioned that your listing is vacant. Yes. Is, is it empty or is there furniture in the home? Oh gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's furniture so you can have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking because, um, you know, that listing that I referenced last week, uh, yeah. the condo, and I'm actually talking to the seller at 11 o'clock today. I've had a couple of showings, but we need to re uh, reprice it again. But anyway, it's empty. They refuse, they haven't lived there in two years and they refuse to stage. So that's why I brought it up. But and that's a good question. And, and for another reason too, if you're doing an open house for another agent, I mean, if it is vacant, just verify that there is something for you to sit on because yeah. that, that can be a long two hours of standing. Um, another just quick tip, and I know I'm going off tangent. I like when people are required to remove their shoes as they are, you know, for sure now, especially now. I always bring a kitchen chair or something to the front entrance part of the house. So people, if they need to sit and take off their shoes, have that ability rather than just kind of, it's awkward. So have that space available for them, for people like me. I mean, my <laughs> balance is good, but my God, sometimes it's hard. Okay, Connie, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun. We are, we are. Um, so yeah, with, with the open houses, just make sure that you do some prep. If you show up the day of, people are gonna ask questions. And um, oh, one thing that I didn't mention, which I know things are common sense, but I should still mention it. Make sure that you know the property you are sitting in. <laughs> I, I know it sounds silly, but people will ask, what year was it built? What kind of heat is there? Is it gas? Is it, is there an oil tank? My goodness, out by us, we have oil tanks. So you really need to know what's going on. How big is the lot? Does the subdivision have an HOA? What are the fees? What does it cover? Does that cover garbage? So really do your research on that property. When you go into MLS, print yourself off a sheet and keep it in your hand. I always do, even for my own properties, because sometimes you get them kind of confused. They're gonna ask the taxes. What are the taxes on this place? And if you don't know, you're gonna look a little silly. So make sure that you know your property. Um, sorry, make sure that you know your property and um, what's going on with it. I, I would also add something to that too. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I would highly recommend planning to be there in the house early. Yes. So plan to be in the area even earlier to get your signs out, to make sure you've you know, done your last check of what's going on outside the house. Time to turn the lights on, double check anything going on inside the house. I can't tell you, I'm sure Janine and Connie can attest to this too, how many times I've seen agents who have an open house and it's three minutes before, or it's the time the open starts and they're Ugh. plowing into the front door, jamming their sign in the front yard, running around, turning on lights. And you're like, Hey, what's up with that leak in the basement? And they're like, Oh, leak in the basement. Cause they haven't walked the house before right. the open starts. So giving yourself that extra time and letting the listing agent know. So the sellers are aware you're going to be early can make a huge difference in how poised and put together you look 
when people inevitably are banging on the door the minute the open house starts. I agree 100%. You should be there 15 minutes early. Um, <laughs> my dad always said, if you're not early, you're late. Um, but be 15 minutes early because people will be waiting on the street to get in a lot of times. Yeah. And it just throws you in a tizzy when when you don't have the lights on and you really don't want them walking around the house if you're not pulled together just because you have to keep an eye on people. So yeah, definitely get there early. And with Sentry Lock, if you're late, guess what? The listing agent knows. And I have been very angry at people when they do my open houses and they're late. It happened one time that the agent was quite late and um, she never did another open house for me. When you're 20 minutes late for an open house, it's not fair to the sellers that have prepped their house. It's not fair to the buyers who want to get into that house. So make sure that you're on, that you're early. And as Amanda said, sometimes when you walk around, especially in the winter now, there might be a leak that it, you never know. There might be a big icicle in front of the door and you can't get in. Or you may you have, have to shovel. shovel. Right. Yep. <laughs> so bring some salt in your car and a little shovel. Yeah. In a perfect world, you guys, because uh, you know, I, this is what I like to do in a perfect world. Um, I get there about 20, 25 minutes early. And I always let the seller know, I know your open house starts at noon, but if you could please be completely out by 1130 and leave every single light on, please. And by the way, I'm not going to turn the lights off when I leave, because if there is a showing after I leave, I just, especially with COVID, I don't want people touching, you know, light fixtures and everything. So please turn them on. And unless it's vacant, um, I'm going to leave all the lights on. So I get there about 25 minutes early and I pull up to the house. I go in, make sure everything is ready to go. I put all my material out and you know, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. If they didn't leave the lights on, then I turn everything on. I check the basement. I, okay. So all is good. Then I leave the house. I lock the door because it's now maybe 10 to 12 or quarter to 12. And my open house is starting at 12. That's when I go out and then I put my signs out because uh -huh. this is what happens, you guys, and it's happened so many times to me. I can be there early and I'm putting the signs out and then I'm getting the house prepared and everyone's seeing the signs, they're following you in the door. So I just kind of do things <laughs> a little differently so I can control how my open house is gonna go. That's a great idea. Um, if you have two back to back, which I used to do and you know I love to do, that may not be the way it's going to happen on your second open house, but I think the more in control that you feel and less stress, the better you're going to be off when people walk in your door. Yep. Um, case in point, a couple of years ago, I had an agent do an open house for me and um, it was a, a fairly new listing. And that was on a Sunday, a Monday, a person called me and said, I saw your name on the sign and I was at your open house yesterday. I said, great. And she said, and there was no one there. And I said, what? She said, yeah, I came in through the house. I walked the entire house with my mom. I was there for about 20 minutes. The lights were all on, the door was unlocked. The open house sign was, up on the rider, but there wasn't anyone there. Oh my gosh. Um, I would like to go back and look at that property. So long story short, what I found out what happened was the agent had gone into the house, turned all the lights on, and then he went and got in his car and left to put up all the open house signs, leaving that front door wide open. <gasps> Yeah. And what a shame in a couple different ways, but majority of the, the big thing was, is that I went and showed that woman that listing the next day, she bought it. And then I listed her house. That was a $2 million mistake on that 
agent on Sunday. That's what I'm talking about. $2 million, a million dollar wow. listing and her house that I listed was a million dollars. Okay. If that doesn't hit you over the head, I don't know what would. <laughs> Well, and for liability purposes, when you're leaving that house open, what if somebody would have went in and ransacked the place or robbed it? I mean, yeah, yeah. Wow. So be prepared. Think, think through things. Okay, so now they walk in the door, Connie, and your first people are walking in the door. Yep. And, you know, everyone has their own method. Let's say I'm walking into your open house and... Hey, Connie, or hi, I'm walking in your house. What do you do to me? What do you do? Hi, my name's Connie. How are you doing today? I'm great. Great. And what's your name? Uh, Janine. Janine, it's so great to meet you. Um, so this house is a four bedroom, three bath house. We're in the Arrowhead School District. Um, where did you Where did you see the open house information? How did you find us? Uh, Zillow. Zillow, great, great, great. Um, so Zillow isn't always as updated as it should be, but I'm glad that you found the information. Um, I'm going to let you tour the house, but um, first can I have your name and your information? And I'm going to um, text you over the information with COVID. You know, they're kind of telling us we should really stay away from paper and contact. So I would love to get you the information on this house. So if I could have your name. Uh, Janine. <laughs> Janine, and your last name? Uh, Werner. Werner, great. And what's your phone number? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome, awesome. Um, and uh, what's your email, please? Uh, J at att.net. Awesome, awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just text you over the information so you have it when you're walking through the house. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. And at the end, I'm going to ask you what your feedback is on the house, if you don't mind, because the owners always want to know, you know, how they can better their house or if you're interested in it. Okay. Perfect. Have at it. All right. So you don't follow them around or anything? No, I don't. And that was going to... Um, it's kind of creepy. No, that was going to be my question is just finding the balance. And I mean, part of it is you're just going to feel it out with who they are and, you know, Sometimes, I mean, they give you the cold shoulder right away. They don't even really want to talk to you, but just kind of finding the balance of, you know, I want to highlight things in the home for you, but I don't want to be right up your butt the whole time, you know, you're walking. Yes, through. that's, right. that's great. Um, and I usually, right now, it's really easy because you can use COVID as an excuse. And if people say, well, I really don't want to give you my information, I always say, well, you know, the owners and our company really need to have your information with COVID going on. We just need to know who's been in the house. And then they always give it up. Yeah. I, I always tell um, after they come in and I kind of make some rapport with them, I will, you know, just ask them to please sign in the, the, the owners. We need to know who's been walking around their home, Yep. you know, it's, it's their home, their private home. They have stuff there. They're your strangers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And every, and you guys, you're going to find your script, your unique way. I never have anyone sign in. Um, I, so last Sunday, or was it Saturday? I had two, I had two couples that I could tell, first of all, when they come in, I'll say, how did you hear about us? And how'd you hear about the open house? And they'll say 90% of the time it's Zillow or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but then I can kind of get, get an indication of, are they working with an agent? You know, so if they're saying, oh, cause last week there was several ones that, oh, I'm working with Dusty or I'm working with blah, blah, blah. I don't care who they're working with. I'm going to say you have an amazing agent. You're in great hands. Yeah. Compliment, compliment, compliment. Um, and then I'll say, uh, if they're through Zillow or whatever, uh, my my answer is, oh, so you're hearing about houses just like everybody else. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I kind of put that doubt in them, like, okay, what does she know that I don't know? What is she mm -hmm. getting that I, that I'm not getting? 
So I don't like go after them as far as their name or anything right away. I'll say, um, you know, go ahead and look around. And if you um, wouldn't mind, I would just like your feedback before you leave. Sure. So um, they look around and I'll say, well, what did you think? And honestly, I'm kind of half listening because most of the time you're not going to get that buyer that's interested in that house. That's just the facts. Um, they're out kicking tires. So that's when I ask them how they heard about us. Um, and then I ask, would you be interested in finding out about properties weeks, if not months before they go on the market? Well, who's going to say no to that? Now, I'm only going to have that conversation with them if they're not working with an agent. If they said they're working with Connie or Laura, I'm, you know, thank you so much. So nice to meet you. I'll let Laura or Connie know that you stopped by. But if they haven't said anything and they said they came in through Zillow or they're, you know, they live in the neighborhood, I'll ask them that question. Would you like to know about homes that are coming up in the market weeks, if not months beforehand? Well, of course, great. What is the best way to get a hold of you? I need your name and your phone number and your email and do not look at their face. Immediately look down on a piece of paper and you write it down. If you look at them, it somehow it breaks it. So don't look at them, write it down. People that want to work with you and do not have an agent and who are serious buyers will give you their information. Plain and simple. I have wasted so much time with people that either are not truth tellers, they are working with an agent mm -hmm. um, and they're writing down something I can't even read. Um, I don't, I'm not interested in those people. I love them, but I'm not interested. I don't wanna waste my time. And guess what? You guys don't want to either. You wanna work with people that want to work with you. So this is the best practice in the world. Eliminate the 70% that come in for what they're working with someone, whatever it is, take that 30% and get them. Now you got them, right? Yep. You immediately send, set them up in MLS, not only in active, you are gonna set them up in delayed and you're gonna tell them, I'm gonna set you up in a portal and you have to log in to see the delayed listings. You, you can't see them otherwise. You're gonna have to log in and see them. There will be a start date of when that property goes on the market. If that is something that is of interest to you, please text me or email me and then we can make that appointment and I will try to be get you in the first possible opportunity. So you're putting a sense of urgency on them and they're already now gonna rely on you for new information that they're not getting from anybody else. Plain and simple, it works. Now, as you're talking to them, things may backtrack a little bit. So they're like, yeah, we're looking. And then as you're having a discussion, oh, you know what, we have a lease through September. So we really can't buy now, but we're out looking. Awesome. This is great, you guys. I think it's really important that we kick some tires. So let's you know, talk about your specifics and let's go ahead and look at some props. So already you reel them in, you are their agent. Yep. It's that, it, I mean, it sounds easy. It kind of is, it kind of is. I am only gonna spend my time with people that wanna spend time with me and eliminate the rest. I think that's like really good advice because I know with newer agents going in, doing open houses at a listing that's not theirs, you feel like, oh my gosh, I have to try to get a client, you know, and you're like, almost like you want to capture everyone. It's like, you know what, just calm down. Right. And if you get one good one, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. honestly, you want to, you're going to, like I said, this is a psychological warfare empower yourself by being in charge of you. So you, you lay it out and it's really easy to say if you've been selling real estate for a while, but it doesn't matter because guess what? They don't know if you've sold for a day or for seven, 10, 20 years. And yep. those who have been selling for a long time have bad, some of them have bad habits 
they'll host an open house and they will never ever contact those people. So mm -hmm. it doesn't make them a better agent. Everyone that's on here is a great agent. It's how you spend that two hours or an hour and a half at an open house. Your goal, when I go in, it's like I'm picking up a buyer today and I'm gonna pick up a seller and I'm gonna weed through the rest because I don't care. Yeah, I yeah. know. I, I've never had anyone come to an open house and specifically come up and ask, so how long have you been an agent? How many houses have you sold? <laughs> they just don't. I mean, they figure, well, you're in this house. You, you know, yeah. you must know what you're doing. And what is my standard response? If somebody were to ask you that? Yeah. Uh, it seems like forever. <laughs> and guess what? It sh shuts them up. Um, I, yeah, I, I remember the first sale I ever did. And they said, so how long you've been doing this? And I'm like, are you oh, kidding me? I am dying right now. I just said, it just seems like forever. And they weren't going to ask me any other questions. So it seems like forever. That's all you say. <laughs> You're not lying because it probably does seem like forever. <laughs> okay, so Connie. You and you have captured so many buyers and sellers at your open house. And I think one of the biggest reasons is you are so approachable. You, you are gathering their information, but you also, you follow up. So how do you follow up? Um, so when I give everyone's information at the open house, some people say follow up the same day. Some say the next day, some say keep calling every day. Um, I don't really like to be a PIA, um, and really annoy them, but the first thing, honestly, that I do to get my, um, mojo going, if you will, I call the next day. Um, and I call all of the agents first from all the people who came through and less if they're hot when they leave, I will call that agent right away. As soon as those people walk out the door, if nobody's in the open house, I call and say, hey, Janine, your buyers, John and Mary Smith, just came through Meadowlark Avenue and they love the house. If you would follow up, they were here for an hour. So yeah. if you would follow up with them, I would really appreciate it. And let me know what their thoughts are and if you'll be submitting an offer. So that's the first thing that I do. And then I call um, everyone. If they do not answer the call, I do send a text because so many people actually text more than they talk nowadays. So I'll send them a text and say, hey, it was great meeting you um, on Meadowlark Avenue on Sunday. If you would like some more information on this house or any others like it, please get back to me. I would love to help you out. Have a great day. So, so I keep it simple and I ask them if they need anything. So typically if someone comes through your open house, who is already working with an agent, you will call, unless they were super hot at the time, you would call the agent as opposed to like email or text, just call them and say, John and Mary Smith came by. I just wanted to let you know. Yes. I always call just to make sure that they know that their clients were coming through. It also builds a good rapport with the other agent. Um, instead of, you know, some people, Unfortunately, there's some sneaky agents in our industry. Uh, and I would just rather have the door open and say, I would love to work with you. Your people came through. They were great. They were here for an hour and they loved the remodel in the master bath. You know, so give them a little bit of ammunition so they they can call their, their buyers and say, hey, Connie said you love the house. Talk to me. And that's it. It's your listing. If you are hosting a, uh, an open house for another agent, um, just give that information to the listing agent and yes. hopefully if they're great, good agents, they'll be reaching out to those other, those agents. So Connie, um, when the people leave and the next day or whatever, and you follow up, they're not hot, you know, people, but you're just like, Hey, you know, let me know this and that and the other thing. How many of those people respond back? Is that like, I would say like 30%, 30. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I do keep them in my database and, yep. you know, now when I'm sending out newsletters and everything, they're a part of that database. So I'm just, I'm trickling all over them. <laughs> right. You know, and a year down the road, maybe. 
It could be because a lot of people, especially when the weather's bad, it's something to do is to go look at houses. Yeah. Even if they're not ready to buy for a couple of months or a year, they will, excuse me, start looking. So, and then there was a question on like open houses and Packer games. We try to work around that, but I'm going to be honest with you serious buyers if they're out there and they want to buy a house they don't care about the packer game um they will be coming to your open house so um we look at the schedule but we're not gonna you know change things too much um because if if they are serious buyers maybe one of them will come to that open house mm -hmm. um they're not going to miss the oppor opportunity um, so that's a good question. And then before setting them up on MLS on delayed only, do you get an agent agreement first? Um, no, I don't. Um, it's my job from that conversation on to keep in touch with them. And if they say, hey, Janine, um, we, call, we saw a couple then delayed and we would really like to look at them. Then I talk about how I do business and how I work. And that starts with uh, a conversation about what a buyer's agent does for them and who pays mm -hmm. their commission. So I, you know, I will put them in delayed because I am giving them information that they not may not be getting from someone else. Yes. But no. Is that how you do it, Connie? Yep. Yeah. I do the buyer agency when we go on our first showing. Got it. And if they're reluctant, I bring one with me. And if they're reluctant and they start asking questions, I, I can't answer any of them because we don't have buyer agency. And you know what? Most of these people don't even know if they're brand new, what that means, or they're, they've heard of it and they're afraid of it. They don't want to be tied to an agent, but you don't want to be tied to a buyer that is unwilling to sign a document um, to work on their behalf. My best line is, um, I have a really big mouth and in order to protect myself and to serve you, I have to have this agreement signed. And if at any time you are unhappy with my um, getting back to you, my response time, please let me know so we can discuss it. Um, but I do take this very seriously and I, I work with buyers who are wanting to work with me. So mm -hmm. I will show them a couple of properties. If they start asking me questions, I'll say, you know what? Here's that buyer agency. I really need for you to sign it legally for me to answer as, as if you were my client. Yep. Okay. And the more you make a big deal about it, the more they're going to make a big deal about it. Yes. Um, do they get the delayed listings in their email automatically? For some reason, I thought they, those don't go to their inbox. Correct. That's why they have to, you have to set them up on the portal. They have to log in to the portal in order to see those delayed listings. It won't come mm -hmm. automatically to their email. And it took us like a year and a half to figure that out. <laughs> so you just tell them, Hey guys, make sure you log into your portal, you know, a few times a week just in case there's delayed. And I'll, I'll also, you know, try to shoot them your way as I see them kind of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So one they should go to their emails. Come on, MLS people. I know. Well, well, don't get started <laughs> on that. That's for sure. Um, also, you guys and Connie, make sure like this is our open house packet. Like I'm have, having another open house this weekend. So if it is not your listing, make sure you download all those documents so yes. you you have it like, so do you know how the how old the roof is or um, looks like there was some water damage in the basement. Make sure you guys have all your facts together. If you don't know, big deal. Just say, yep. you know what? I'm not okay. sure. Let, right? Yep, I can get back to you. Um, also, print off the record, the real estate condition report, so you know what's going on. Um, in case if there was any remodels or updates, um, if there's anything wrong with the house, that will all be on that real estate condition report, or it should. 
because people will ask, you know, when was this wall repaired in the basement? I see fresh uh, concrete skim on it. Um, you know what? Let me look at the real estate condition report quick. Or you know what? It was on the real estate condition report. Let me look it up real quick. Oh, they just redid the wall five years ago. Perfect. And it says right on here that there's a 20 year guarantee. I wouldn't worry about it. It's guaranteed. It also wouldn't hurt for you to have a uh, contract there in case someone wants to write on site. Yep. Yeah, I always bring my laptop. I always have music playing. Um, it calms me down. Um, so I always usually have, you know, whatever, <clears throat> classical music, blah, blah, blah. Um, but just to kind of have some kind of vibe going when they walk in is really nice. I used to do really fun and creative things in the winter. I would have like a bunch of hand warmers. So with my cart attached to it and, they, you know, I, and that was like a big hit um, in the summer, bottled waters, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we'll get back to that point where we can do it. Um, yeah. Just, you know, and like you said, I have a red carpet. It's a runner that I got on Amazon. Um, it is amazing and it works. And I roll it on the sidewalk in nice weather um, as people are coming up, like they're walking on the red carpet to come to the open house. I mean, cheesy, yes, but is anyone else doing it? No, I'll do it. It's fun. That's awesome. Have fun, you know, I sometimes if I, if I can, I may bring a bouquet of flowers and a vase, yeah. um, you know, anything just to, or, you know, lighting a candle, just make sure you blow it out, you know, just something that someone's gonna walk away from and say, oh, we went to two other or three other ones. And, you know, what's his name never got off the couch. He was just sitting there and said, go ahead and look. <laughs> don't be, don't be that person. Yeah. Yeah. Just treat somebody how you would want to be treated. And if they want to work with you, they will give you their information. Plenty. And a smile goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know how long you've been selling real estate. Honestly, they don't care. Mm -hmm. they, I would rather work with a brand new agent a hundred times over than oh, yes. some person that's been in the industry and is not working that hard. Yep. hundred percent. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit and go into the, uh, never ending referrals. And we had a script last week. Did anyone take the time out to use that script and call their A's and W's? And if you didn't, I'm going to beat you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys, it works. I had three appointments this week using that silly script and calling my A's and W's. This week, it's B's and E's. If you want that script, email me and I will send it to you. It And I revised it a little bit. I'm going to just give you my script. Um and here it goes. Hi, this is Janine from the J. Schmidt Group. Um, thanks for taking my call. Um, I was calling you today is to see if you can help me with a project I'm working on for my clients and friends. Um, obviously, as a real estate professional, I have clients moving into the area that are in need of all types of professional services and service pro providers that they left behind when they moved. So I am curious if you've had a great experience with anyone that has provided a service to you that you may suggest to me, um, I'm gonna be placing it in a directory of service providers. So they're gonna think about it. Yeah, I have a great painter or um, mm -hmm. I have a hardwood floor guy or blah, 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 whatever it is. And then I'll say, thank you. and. I'll say, do you have a moment to help me on this particular area? People ask me all the time, do you have a great CPA or tax preparer? And B, 
because I'm telling you, people are always looking for that type of um, outlet. And if they do great, I'll take that as well. And I'll say, thank you for helping me. And when, as this comes together, I'll be sharing my findings with you. Um, and as always, I really appreciate referrals. Is there anyone that you know at work in your neighborhood that is looking to buy or sell a house? Um, not right now, Janine. All right. Well, thanks for thinking about that. Is there anything that I can help you with? Um, sure or no, whatever. Great. It was wonderful to connect with you and have a wonderful week. All right. Just by doing that, I got, I actually heard more about of who not to hire, painters <laughs> never to call. Um, but it was such an easy conversation that I came from contribution that they even forgot why I called to begin with. And yeah literally had three referrals. So it's that easy. If I don't reach them and I call their phone number, I most of the time do not leave a message. So um, this week I'm doing B's and E's and I, I'm behind. So I haven't started yet, but that's why I time block the rest of my afternoon to do my B's and E's. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere until I get it done. Um, do it, do it. It should give you, if you are doing it consistently, at least one extra closed transaction a month. That's 12 extra transactions a year, mm -hmm. all through your database. That doesn't mean that you have had to sell them a house if you've just started, you're not going to have that. This, these are going to be your friends, your, your neighbors, your old coworkers, doesn't matter. You have to do it. Has anyone done it? Oh, somebody said, Grady, I got two consults doing it. Awesome. awesome. Um, I called the few I had in my database, not money with those letters for last name. Okay. Did you get the referrals or on that call or did they call you back? No, I got them as I'm speaking to them. I had one gal that said, okay, to me, and I have a lady I work with. I'm not quite sure how quickly she is going to move, but let me have a conversation with her before I give you her information and make sure it's okay. Well, I didn't hear back from her right away. I have no patience. So I waited <laughs> three or four days. And I said, I knew where this woman lived because she kind of told me the area. And I said, hey, listen, I actually have somebody that is looking in that area and it may not be a right fit and your friend may not be ready to sell, but I would really like to have a conversation with her, which was all 100% legitimate because there was somebody on my team that I asked, hey guys, is anyone looking to... Um, anyone have a buyer in River West or like, yeah, I do. Great. That's, there you go. Um, so I called that contact back and she gave me that information and I, I, she's a seller and a buyer. So nice. um, do it. It is painless, painless. So I am going to encourage every single one of you, if you haven't done your A's and W's, then do those. Um, if not, then move on to your B's and E's because you're gonna, we have a, we have a schedule and um, the A's and W's, we're gonna go back and hit again in April. Mm -hmm. So we wanna stay on track. And I'll send you, if you don't have it already, email me and I will send you the script. Database, let's get creative of who is in our database and how can you add people if you've just started. You've got everyone that you have, friends, family, co-workers. Again, the exercise is going through the alphabet. You know, So a really good way to add to your database, yes. in the group chat, I would like everybody to write down how many contacts they have in their phone. 
Oh. How many contacts do you guys have in your phone? So this may take me a while because this just totally isn't my gig. So go to contacts. And then I believe if you go all the way down to the very bottom of your alphabet, just go all the way down to the very bottom, bottom of your alphabet. Whoops, where am I? Here we go. There's a number. 125, 1336, 87, 317, 558, 507, 510, 784, 1181, Benji. <laughs> Uh, 1122, I'm at 1389. How many you got, Janine? 1424. There you go. 1389. Okay. So when people say they do not have anybody in their database, the number of contacts in your phone should be at least to what you have in your database. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. <laughs> so for everyone who says, I don't have anybody in my database, you, so the least amount, here we go. We're gonna pick on Jose. He has 87 people. So Jose, where are you? It's Josie. Josie, sorry. Um, so Josie, you have 87 in mm -hmm. your contacts. Um, do you use Facebook? I have many on Facebook and I have been trying to reach out to them and get updated on that. A lot of people is like, who are you? You know, from back in the day, you know, kind of situation. <laughs> so I am establishing some relationships through that. And that's what I've started working on this past week. I put a spreadsheet together downloaded everybody from Facebook and trying to contact those. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. And that's what we want to do is we want to try and help you guys. We want to help you to help me to help you to help me kind of a thing. And going back into Facebook for people who are into it and the younger generation, obviously not me really, really works by Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. So a lot of, I'm picking on younger people here. A lot of younger people do not have the database or the contacts that um, the more <laughs> mature crowd has um, because we have phone numbers for everybody. So what you can do is start instant messaging people on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat and really get in touch with these pe people face to face, to face, touch to touch and get their information so we can start sending them um, emails and texts in order to get them into your database. So, you know, it's, it's hard because people say, well, I don't have that many. I don't have that many. We have to go into some different venues to pull all these people through. Um, moms and dads, you usually have a school directory. You usually have the list of soccer players, parents, I mean, those are all names and contact information that you can really start adding into your database. So this gives you a couple of, um, of different areas to add to your database to really start working that. They can always opt out. Has anybody ever heard it's better to ask um, forgiveness than permission? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, day. and I do all the time. So as you already have their information, you're not soliciting the unknown so, you know, that kind of takes you off of that solicitation list because you do have their contact from a reliable source or a club or, or something of that, of that matter. So you could actually take that script and you could even put it on Facebook and say, I'm actually working on a um, professional uh Let's see, let, how, how would I re, well, let me think about that. Um, I am compiling a great contractor list. And if any of you have anything that you would like to share, I will be putting a booklet together. Please text or email me your preferred five-star experience contractors. Put that yep. on Facebook. So don't have them reply on Facebook because you don't want that. You, you, because that's really not the point of it, but you're giving, they're giving you permission 
to, you know, they're sharing something with you, then you can follow back up. Um, I've also done in the past, and this really worked, um, I have a new program to um, determine the value of your home. If, and I am looking for um, homes to practice with, private message me if you would like for me to determine the value of your home. Oh my God. Yes, I had like a bunch of old neighbors that had reached out and said, Janine, can you give us the value of our home? It's just another opportunity for you to talk to them and develop rapport. So that's great. Yeah, but just say I am compiling five star service providers. If you have anyone that you can recommend to put in my booklet, please reach out to me either text or email. I would love to chat with you about it. And I will be sharing you know, my booklet with you once I have it compiled. And you actually are compiling a booklet. How perp who wouldn't want to have that information? Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, that's great. Excuse. So at that point, you put your cell phone as well as your business email. email. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. By not really having a script and you're flying by the seat of your pants, which, you know, we're all in sales and we all love to do, that is a script. That's your yes. script. So you might as well have it polished. So you're going to feel confident. It's going to be the same script every time, but then it's yours. It's yours. Mm -hmm. Um. Any questions on anything that we have discussed? I'm kind of looking through. Uh, oh, um, let's see. Bethany, three appointments. From That's last... awesome. Okay, Bethany, can you unmute and tell us about it? Um, so just kind of reaching out. I've been doing, I, I did, actually did my note cards. I've never done note cards before. And I got some from the dollar store and um, I'd had been reaching out to my sphere anyway. So I was able to put some personal, what we talked about, like, oh, I'm so excited, you know, to get you going with, you know, looking for your first home, blah, 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 that kind of thing. But um, I was able to get um, some people that were kind of on the fence thinking about getting started for spring, even though it's winter and, you know, letting them know that, well, if you want to do something in spring, we have to start getting ready now. Like I oh, yeah. need you to get in touch with a lender and blah, 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 that kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah. All for like all new home buyers. Awesome. Does anyone have a, uh, something that a buyer or seller said to you that stumped you. Okay. I knew it. Bridget. <laughs> need to know this. On my buyer consult, they said, well, wh how much money or what kind of closing costs should we prepare for? And I, I know that typically they're like one to $2,000, but I wanted to know exactly what to tell them as far as, well, you might, is it like one year of homeowner's insurance that you're going to need to pay your taxes? Like, I'd love if you guys could tell me exactly what, how you would answer that question. And I'm yep. going to write down exactly yep. what you said. So Focus has an app yep. that you can download and that's all you do. You put in the accepted offer price, or let's just say the sales price for now and you yep. put it in the village or city or whatever, and it will literally calculate what their closing costs are going to be. Yes. It is amazing. And you can then, it downloads into a PDF on your phone and you can send it directly to them. Yes. So I don't get into the whole conversation about that. I'll say, mm -hmm. you know what? I will get that to you um, today because you literally just get on the app and send it through. Um, but generally, generally, if you're taking it at 6%, it's going to be another 1% on top of your commission. So if I listed at 6%, it 
it's going to be about 7% to sell your house. That is just a general rule of thumb. Um, but just get the Focus Title app. Yep, oh, Connie has it. That is right. I can't do this backwards. Sorry. Doo, 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 right there it is. The Focus right next to the KW, the Focus Title app. It's Focus One. And that's and what it looks like. Ding dong, it works. It it's is, really, it is really nice. It's really nice. And they were like, what's escrow? <laughs> but, yeah. Escrow oh, for your taxes? Yeah. Yep. Another one that I always got to was, um, does my um, earnest money go, what is that, where does that go and how does that work? Does it go yes. towards what? It goes towards your down payment. And yes, that check is cashed. So um, it's not just being held somewhere in a safe. It's actually going to be cashed. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but have you seen a lot of, um, it, now they're doing it electronically, but we were getting a lot of checks that were bouncing. Just FYI. But yes, it is immediately, now that it's done, most of it is electronically, but that was, where does that go and what is it towards? It goes towards your down payment. Um, I will give you something that came my way. Um, I was in South Milwaukee, today's Thursday, I don't know, Monday, um, talking to these sellers and they said, well, we, you know, we want to put our house on the market in the springtime when the market's really hot. <laughs> and, I, and they said, what do you think about that? And I said, well, let me tell you, the market is super hot right now. This is spring market, January spring. If you decide you want to wait, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, um, there is going to be more competition. There's going to be more listings out there. Right now, the inventory is so low. This is the best time to put your house on the market. The interest rates are below 3%. So the buyers are out there. They have the buying power. Put it on the market now. This is spring market. Does anyone they, know how many new houses were on MLS today for Waukesha County? No. How many? Nine. Nine. There's usually 30 to 40 houses. There was nine houses today. Yesterday, guess how many? One. There was eight lots, but only one house on MLS new yesterday. Wow. That's scary. I mean, they're just, we need houses. We really need houses for sale. So when people do ask, when is the right time? Right now. Now. Random question on that. When you look at the hot sheet, mm -hmm. I have like all of those homes in Milwaukee that are like 2000 to like 50,000. Is there a way to filter your hot sheet or not really? Like, I still want to see some homes in Milwaukee County, just not all the homes maybe under like- Not all the foreclosures? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, all you can do for the hot sheet is the county and the property type. Right. I What I do is I, okay, let's say it's Milwaukee. I will for, first pull all the delays because- I see more and more of that happening, thank God. So I'll look at the new delayed listings, but I it takes me a while. No, nope, the hot sheet's not gonna be able to separate. So mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah, and it's amazing how people go right into, right on the market instead of delayed. Um, I wanna ask you, Bridget, how your new listing went and what the heck is going on with that? First okay. listing. Also ask a question about, I, it went, really well I feel like I learned more in a week than like I could have <laughs> you know you just kind of gotta throw yourself in the fire and learn as you go sometimes yeah one thing that I found really challenging and I got accepted offer yesterday yay congrats was the like maybe we can do a class on the real estate lingo like I just I don't want to say anything I'm not supposed to say you got realtors who I feel like some are probably trying to like take advantage and they're like is your are they flexible and you're, you don't want to say like 
I, I just didn't know what to say as far as that, you know, or like when we were doing counter offers, I just like, I know you can't just be like, dude, just, if you just did this, like we could be done, you know, I just want to be like, I want to be like an auctioneer and be like, do I hear 5.30? Do I hear 5.30? You know, and just be like, let's go. But you can't say anything and dancing around. I I didn't know what to say. I just didn't even want to have those calls with the other co-brokes because I'm like, they're going to ask me. I'm going to end up in realtor jail. I don't know what I can say, what I can't say. <laughs> I That was what was a little tricky for me. How many offers did you get? We got two offers. Okay. Awesome. And how different were the two? Were they pretty close to each other? Yes. Did you multi-counter those offers? We got the one offer and it was a little bit of like a lower offer and we countered and they wouldn't come up. So we kind of just said, no, we're going to stay firm. And then we got a, a second offer the next day. And of course it was like even a little worse than the first offer, but anyways, then we countered and now we're, we're all good. But I guess it is true. Your first offer is usually your best offer. It's, I know. Oh my God. Which I was shocked. Yeah. When people say it, when you hear that, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As a seller, it's like, oh yeah, right. It is so true. Like I was, I think 90%, 95% of the time it's your best, your best offer. You have to be super careful. This is what I do to keep myself in line. Um, Cause I have, you know, I could not, I visualize the sellers sitting at the table with me. So when I'm on the phone negotiating an offer, I am visualizing that those sellers are sitting right next to me. And mm -hmm. so I keep myself completely um, in their best, working in, for them in their best interest. Yep, you are working for your sellers. You have a fiduciary responsibility, remember those words from your test, <laughs> um, to negotiate the best deal for your seller. So I agree with Janine 100%. Anything that you say to that other agent, you make sure that you would tell the sellers that also. So if they say, if an agent calls and says, are they flexible, flexible in what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yep. Flexible in the closing date? What and I like to, and I don't know about you, Connie, I like to see if I can get some of those little pieces wrapped up before um, yes. we keep going back and forth encountering. Uh -huh. So, you know, are they flexible? Well, I guess they might be if all the other terms align to their liking. Yep. So um, potentially they could be flexible if that were the case. Yep. And I'll always ask, what is the seller's ideal closing date? Let's see if we can make it happen. Because as Janine said, the less you go back and forth, you are more likely to get that offer. Because keep in mind, when you're in transition of countering, somebody else can slip in and take your deal. So you would like, when you write your offer, you want it to be strong right off the bat with, with no question. So by calling that listing agent and asking, um, what is the most important thing to the sellers? Some say price, some say terms. Um, you know, a closing date is very important. How many offers are you receiving? How many do you have in hand? That yeah. was the other thing. All the realtors were like, no one would, everyone was interested in putting an offer in, but no one would put an offer in. They kept saying, well, let us know as soon as you get an offer. And I'm yep. like, someone's got to be, uh, no. be the first, you know. That is my number one pet peeve. Yep. You know yep. what? I I am honestly, if I get an offer, I will put it on showing time. Go into the yep. showing time link and alert everyone that has seen the property, everyone that is has a schedule to see the property, that you have received an offer. Because I, am, I don't have time and no one else does either. Yeah of going back to every single agent. That's BS. So I'll say, you know what? You may want to just watch your showing time alerts. You'll get an email if I get an offer, but I can't promise you that, I, that I'm going to be reaching out to you personally. Yep. Um, what about when they ask you how many offers you've had? Yeah, I get that all the time. Um, I'll, 
that's why I put a deadline on when I'm going to be presenting an offer because they'll say right away, do you have any offers in hand or how many offers you have in hand? If I, if I have a couple, I'll say, I, I have a few and I'm expecting some. And if I don't have any, I'll say I have a lot of interest and I wouldn't be surprised if I had something, you know, quite soon. Yep. Is that how you handle it, Connie? I do. If someone, and you know, it's funny it is it depends on the attitude. We're probably not supposed to do this, but it depends on the attitude of the agent. <laughs> yeah. More right? Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if they call and they're really nice and really friendly and accommodating, I'll say, you know, I do have two offers in hand, but I am expecting more. I have a lot of interest, so I would love to field your offer. Please send it to me as soon as possible. And if, if somebody calls and says, well, you know, I have to know, blah, blah. And I don't know. It doesn't happen very often because I'll usually turn a conversation into a positive. And that's what I try and do with, when I'm dealing with all of all, all of my deals is turn things into a positive. Yeah. It, it just goes much more smoothly. And having a great conversation, you know who you will want to work with and who you won't. And if you get two offers that are exactly the same, you're seller will ask you, Connie, what do you think? And I'll say, you know, this person was very accommodating on the phone. They called, I had a great conversation with them. I think, you know, for ease of transaction, this agent would be great to work with. And then they'll say the other one. And I'll say, well, <laughs> I never even talked to this person. I opened up my email and it was there. So there's that. So, you know, with dealing with with personalities and playing nice in the sandbox, it goes a long way. I know that I know for a fact that I have won some offer situations because of my conversation with the other agent. Yep. Yep. Because they may have some really horrible clients or very, you know, not so great sellers that for whatever reason, you know, it's, it, they're prickly. It is so nice to have then a co-broke that you is accommodating is, is going to be accommodating to you and is easy to work with. Um, as a buyer's agent, I'm probably everyone's worst nightmare because I honestly start the conversation. We're writing an offer, you know, what is the most important thing? I got your ideal closing date. I have all those terms. And this is what I say then. Um, how can I make sure that we are the ones to be chosen? Mm -hmm. And they just like, I'm going to tell you right now, don't be that agent. Though. Do not be that agent on the other side. <laughs> um, I will have some agents that will just say, if you write at this price, um, that should do it. It's like 10 drops. What the yeah. heck? Um, hey, I'm not afraid to ask. Yep. And then I've had other agents say, well, just write your highest and best. Right. I've heard that. Yep. Ask the question, what do I yep. need to do to make sure that my buyers get this house accepted? And hold on to your hat because it's always an interesting response. <laughs> and I've had people tell me exactly what to put in the offer. And I'm just, I mean, good thing we're not on FaceTime with them because my jaw just drops. Yeah. They want to close this date. And, you know, I know we're asking 365, but they would really take 355. So that'll be fine. And I'm like, oh, yeah. oh my gosh. It, so you're allowed to say that? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just wondering, like, I think you're allowed to say that they're not allowed to respond that would give anything away. So, you, yeah. I, you know. Another thing too, if you kind of set it up that way, I'm going to tell you, I have had agents that will call back if there's several offers and they'll say, and they're not giving anything away. They'll say, could your buyers yes. maybe close a few days earlier or mm -hmm. could your buyers, um, it, could they come up maybe $500? Cause then I already know, okay, they want to work with us. Yep. And they're basically telling us without telling us, this is what we need to do. Yes. So I'll be that person. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, as a as a listing agent, I mean, clearly I have this listing in Shorewood that is not moving. What am I allowed? How much am I allowed to say to a potential buyer's agent? Write a damn offer. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't say, oh, my client would be thrilled with X amount of dollars. I can't say that. Can't you say Can you something say like should, they would entertain? I would say they're motivated. Yeah, if, if they're motivated. They're motivated. Yeah. My, my clients they're motivated. are motivated. Period. I highly encourage you to write an offer. Put it on paper. And I mm -hmm. will um, give that offer to my sellers. I will present okay. that offer. Put it on paper. We are ready to, we are ready to roll, you know? Yeah. I've had, um, selling agents say, you know, they are very motivated and mm -hmm. they are willing to entertain any and all offers. Yes. So it's kind of like code. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and again, that's when you have that conversation with your seller before it gets to that point. Well then let's price it. So we will get any and all offer. So yeah let's price it right. If, if we're pricing it at the peak and we might be out of touch, then let's get the price down to where we are going to get multiple offers. So we don't have to have that conversation because yeah. already you're kind of giving their, the seller's power away. Right. So let's price yeah. it right to begin with, to get some competitive offers. Yes. I know I I've had some luck with just going to um, ask the seller age selling agent, or the listing agent, um, you know, what, what do the buyers prefer for closing? We can be flexible. We can go quick. We can go long. And I got the last one was they need, he told me they need 60 days. Yep. So like, okay, we can do that. We'll put that in the offer. Yep. Um, also when you're presenting an offer, if you're writing an offer for your buyers, just really remember, do I, you know, I'm not seeing them as much as I used to, but do not put a photograph of them when they're submitting their, um, their, their offer, you know, cute family bubble. Don't submit a photo because that can be construed as steering. Yeah. So, um, say to your clients, feel free to send me an email about yourself and why, you know, this is the perfect home for you but we are not attaching any photos to this offer letter. So just please remember that. Mm -hmm. And some of those letters are so sappy that, I mean, I, I was a seller a couple of years ago, I don't know. And I got these letters and the, and the, one of the offers was so horrifyingly low. I'm like, I don't care how cute you are or how much you want my house. <laughs> you are nowhere near. And I'm, so I kind of like tossed them aside and then they came back after we heard, they heard we had another offer and I'm like, honey, you lowballed me so bad before you're, you're kind of out because you're going to be looking for something on the home inspection. So, you know, letters can be a blessing and a curse, right? Yep. Janine, you're saying do not have any picture of your buyer on that letter. Correct. Okay, I just submitted an offer the other day and the picture is, it was the key piece that, that this seller moved on. Well, be careful with that. I, I used to do that too. I no longer do it. Okay, um, that, that could create a problem. It could create a problem. I have a question. I wrote in my first offer a couple months ago. I must have spent 12 hours. I was sweaty and I stared at it all weekend. And I just got one little sentence from the listing agent. Thank you. They've gone with another offer. Well, sure enough, I look at it closing this weekend. You know, our offer was very strong, 235, you know, pretty normal financing. We did have an inspection appraisal and it sold for 227. And I know that things could have come up, but it did say in MLS concessions, no conventional loan. It wasn't cash. And I, I did notice that it, the listing agent was from the same office as the buyer's agent. So I just, I don't know. 
It could be. So I have had that question a lot when my buyers didn't get a property and then they see it closer. Like what the hell Janine, excuse my language. We wrote for something over that. So my answer would be probably this. They, something happened on the home inspection and they decided to lower the price rather than fix the problem. So 99.9% .9 of the, the reason for that is that something did happen on home inspection and it could be a roof, chimney, who knows, but they then just dropped the price a little bit. Plain and simple. Yeah. Well, and it could be um, the terms. So maybe these buyers did not have a home inspection. Maybe yeah. they did not have an appraisal. Yeah. And people, you know, so it is not always the price that people go on. Maybe it was the closing date. Yeah, it could be a lot, but I, it could my, be a lot of different things. It's not always price. Right. I had a listing that, um, very interesting. I mean, sometimes you just think, oh my God, there, there is a higher power that's watching over the real estate world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was, a, a, you know, a nice house. It needed a new roof. I mean, she disclosed it. It, this, it probably has a year left. And um, this is very interesting. I was on the market for a couple of weeks, which in this market is a long time. And I got a roof quote, I got two roof quotes. And I said, if we don't get an offer in the next week, I think we should reduce the price by $4,000 because we're not going anywhere with this price. We have the roof quotes you still may have to put a new roof on. I mean, I, I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but we need to get things going. As soon as we did that price drop, um, I had a buyer that came through and the agent called and said, what does she need to get this house done? I said, well, I have a roof quote. That's been the feedback. It's near the end of its life. And mm -hmm. he said, great. If I write an offer and waive inspection, knowing that we need a new roof, but would you take a condo contingency? Now she's from Madison, this buyer is, her condo is gonna go on like the second or third day we put it on the market. I said, write it up, sir. So the buyer felt like she won because we were working with her, knowing that she had to sell her condo and we were gonna take it off the market because the seller was winning without having that home inspected. I mean, so I guess what I'm saying is, is that both parties want to feel like they're winning. How can you make that other, that co-broke make, you know, feel like they're winning as well. Both parties want to win. Yep. Um, we are running over and I've got to go and I'm sure all of you do because we could just talk about everything all day long. Connie, what is our next week's subject? Because I forgot. Um, next week, um, Jenny Klug will be with us. Is it Jenny Klug? Um, yep, yeah, Jenny Klug on the 21st from Focus. Okay. So she will be going over title, title search. What is a title? Um, basically, Title 101. Okay. And you guys, I know that could be what you think might be a snoozer, but... It isn't. Oh I my gosh. Title is so important. Every single time. And if these are questions that your buyers and sellers are going to ask you. So um, show up. I want you to please email me if you want that script. And if you haven't done your A and W's in the database, do your B's and E's with me today. Yay. Thank you, Janine. You're awesome. Thank you, Connie. You're awesome. Thank Everyone you so here much. is awesome. Thank Everybody you. Everybody have a great Thank weekend. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 What's your email? Oh, jwerner, W-E-R-N-E-R -E -E at kw.com. Thank you. Thank hey, you, guys. For you. This is my yeah. first one joining. Is this only for launch? No, anyone can join. Okay. Awesome. Is this Katie? Yeah, I just came over with the Pluster Property Group from Shore West. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. I mean, Dusty was on here. Laura Brewster was on here. They're all veterans. Yeah, it's just come okay. because it's positive and it's all good information. Would love it.
Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't sure because I joined launch earlier in the week and okay. I just based off of like what they had discussed from the Tuesday meeting. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here because I wasn't sure if like this is one that you have to like pay for or not. So you don't if you are um, you're not a brand new agent, right? I like within the last six months. OK, I, I already went through all this training at like Shore West. Got it. I, I would just verify that with Mandy, but, um, even if you're, if you're not just come anyway, just try to come in because you'll take away a lot of information. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to email you for those scripts. All right. Thank you, Katie. All right. Have a good All day. Right. You too. Bye-bye.